For some strange reason, I'm in the mood for werewolves. I was kind of in the mood for werewolves all week for just reasons I can't quite put my finger on. The problem is, is that, you know, I mean, there are a lot of werewolf movies, but I can't quite figure out what I want to watch, you know? Uh, so I just grabbed a bunch of them, and I thought I'd kind of run through them, and maybe in the process I'll figure out which two or three I want to have a look at, okay? Well, in the first werewolf movie that um, I'm aware of, anyway, uh, is uh, 1935's a Werewolf of London, and it's on this double feature disc. Uh, it's one of two Universal Horror classics. Maybe if I held it closer, you'd be able to see a little better. But yeah, and um, this is one that I had seen when I was a kid and liked very much. And it still holds up. I mean, some of the effects are a little hinky looking in places. Now, of course, with, I mean, we're all so spoiled with all of these, you know, amazing special effects and things. But, you know, back, back then, you know, they were really having to kind of, you know, I don't know, I mean, you know, pull things out of their ear in terms of, you know, doing effects and, you know. They did, they did a lot of lap dissolves in terms of werewolf uh, transformations. But anyway, this stars Henry Hull, who was a, quite a, renowned stage actor of the 1930s. Went on to do other movies, of course, but um, I've got hair in my face. I don't know why. Uh, but that's always an easy go-to for me, you know? Um, it's nostalgic. You know, I, I like it. But speaking of nostalgia, okay, there's probably n no werewolf movie in my experience that's more nostalgic and speaks more to, you know, my childhood and watching these old films on TV, then 19, I believe it was 1942's um, The Wolfman. And um, I just, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very cool movie, and, and it's become sort of, well, those who love it, love it, and those who don't love it seem to like to take pot shots at the fact that it is, it is somewhat dated, you know, to look at. Uh, in terms of the effects and, you know, some of the, you know, various, uh, um, you know, visual effects, you know, didn't run quite as smooth as maybe they later did, uh, you know, uh, later in the monster cycle and things. But, um, you know, back when, you know, they would have uh, plaster pillows for, you know, the person to lay their head so the pillow would not move, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, all this technical stuff about the transformations, the main thing is, uh, with the Wolfman, of course, uh, with me, is that it's, it's a hugely sympathetic film uh, with a very sympathetic character, Larry Talbot, uh, who, um, you know, comes into the film, well, for me, not being terribly likable. I mean, he's an all right guy, but you really feel sorry for him after what happens to him, and, you know. You know, this curse overtakes him, and he turns into a wolf, and, you know... He must, you know, go around growling in the night in the fog and killing and wake up the next morning and go, where the hell was I, you know? But that's, that's a big favorite. And I love, um, I love uh, Claude Rains in this, too. But it's got a great cast, including Bela Lugosi as the uh, gypsy. Uh, well, you know, and then, of course, the Wolfman stories progressed. Uh, the official sequel to The Wolfman was... Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, and for the first 20 minutes of the film, it's a straight Wolfman sequel before it gets into the territory of, you know, bringing the characters into where they will meet up with Frankenstein and uh, such. And, uh, interesting, this is the one and only time where Bela Lugosi played the monster. Um, some say he refused to play in 1931. Um... Others say he was ousted in favor of, uh, you know, finding a new star uh, to, to play the monster. But in any case, uh, big favorite from when I was a kid, you know. Are you kidding? He's like, Mom, can I watch Frankenstein meets the Wolfman tonight? Oh, yeah. 
know, does the TV work? <laughs> so it's a big, big favorite. And that was followed by House of Frankenstein, which re returned Boris Karloff to the whole classic universal horror cycle. Not playing the monster this time, but playing a mad doctor. And uh, stuntman and uh, actor Glenn Strange took on the role at this point of the monster. And, uh, well, that's a, that's a story in itself, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a fun one. It, it, it's, it's a real monster rally. It's got almost all the monsters. Everybody but the mummy uh, was in this House of Frankenstein film. Uh, it's got Hunchback, Mad Doctor. It's got John Carradine playing Dracula. Um, and, you know, and of course, Frankenstein Monster and the Wolfman. So, I mean, hey, you know, and a Gypsy Girl, too. What more could you ask for? But, little known to me, it's part of this box set. Uh, I don't think it's available separately. The film, uh, entitled House of Dracula, was was the last real serious monster movie in that cycle. And Larry Talbot, after having been killed at the end of every movie, but then comes back for the next one, because you can't kill a werewolf, apparently, even though there, there are ways you're supposed to be able to. But in this House of Dracula, they cure him. They finally cure him of his werewolfery, which is very cool and, and quite a touching little sequence. But then, you know, a couple years later, they brought him back in Frankenstein uh, meet Abbott and Costello, or Abbott and Co Costello meet Frankenstein, wh whichever you prefer. And that was the gateway film, I think, for a lot of kids. Not for me, because I, my parents were remarkably lax about letting me watch things. So, But for a lot of kids, that was their first uh, viewing of the universal horror cycle, you know, and the monsters. Well, let's see, another, another werewolf film, which is a contemporary, it's kind of a knockoff of the Wolfman made by um, uh, 20th Century Fox called The Undying Monster. And it's got some twists and turns and some variations. Of course, they've still got a poem about the guy who turns into a monster. But, uh, yeah, it's a cool little film. Very nicely done, very atmospheric. All of these are in black and white. and You know, they just reek of all of that classic old Hollywood atmosphere. Well, after that, in more contemporary times, we've got Jack Nicholson and Wolf, which is more in the vein of... Um, you know, uh, Werewolf of London. It's a minimalist makeup. All right, with all apologies to Michelle Pfeiffer and Wolf, here's the film that, um, for me, has the most babe factor in it. Right. And it's a film I sort of want to like more than I really do, but the reason I like it the most is because of... Christina Ricci. But, uh, yeah, Cursed, which was a troubled film. Uh, it's a um, Wes Craven film, and I guess they started filming, and then the actress that was playing the lead dropped out for some reason, and they prevailed upon Christina Ricci, who came in and gave a really nice and creepy performance. And um, It has its problems, but it has its moments, too. Uh, and it also tries to kind of pay homage to the original universal horror cycle and uh, and the werewolf films. Now here, speaking of controversy, is a film that people either love or hate. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm not saying it's the best ever, but um, and I'm not a big fan of you know the more contemporary mummy movies made by the same director, but I. I enjoyed Van Helsing. I thought it was a an interesting sort of refresher on the old monsters um, in a very different way, you know. Um, and Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> and um, I think it will be Werewolf of London, The Wolfman, and the Undying Monster. And they're all kind of, you know, in the same general time frame. Uh, 
Werewolf of London was made a few years earlier, but otherwise the other two films are contemporaries. So, I'm way back in the old times tonight, so okay, that's it. It's Werewolf Night. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.